everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my YouTube thumbnails using PicMonkey. So I start by going to PicMonkey.com and then I find a image that I want to edit. And in this case I'm just going to be using a screenshot from the video that I filmed. Once that pulls up, my first step is to crop the image. So I like to do it at 1280 by 720. That way I know that everything I edit and apply to the image will be viewable on the thumbnail that YouTube allows. And then a lot of times I will just click auto adjust and see if I like the way that it looks. If I don't really like it, then a lot of times I'll go to exposure and adjust the brightness, the contrast, and anything else that I think and just sort of find what I think looks the best. Then I start working on whatever overlays I want to use. So I click on a little butterfly icon and I find my computer and add my own overlay. And in this case, I'm going to be adding a Jujube logo PNG that I found online, which I'll show you guys how to find those here in just a minute. But I add that first and then I usually add like a rectangle or some sort of shape to add some contrast behind it. Once I make it the right size so that it covers whatever image I added, I will usually change the color of it by using the dropper icon and finding a similar color somewhere in my thumbnail already. And then I right click on the rectangle and send to back so that the image that I put, like the Jujube logo, shows up in front of it. And then I basically just play around with different colors, different colors for the text, different colors for the rectangle, and just kind of see what I think looks best. Another overlay that I like to add is in the label section. So here on the top you can see all of these are available for free for anybody who used PicMonkey, but whenever you see the little crown icon, those are available only if you pay the $4.99 a month. So I'm just going to be showing you the basic one. I'm just going to grab the little circle and sort of find a good spot to put that and then I'll add some text inside of it. When you go to the text section, you can see which ones are available for free and which ones require the subscription service. So I'll just go ahead and select one here that you can have in the basic package. And I'm just going to type in BFF for the bag. Once I size the lettering kind of how I want it so it fits nicely inside of the label that we made earlier, I will go to effects and I'll show you guys after I change some of the text color. It does require the subscription service, but it is worth it in my opinion. And then with the effects, you can add stuff like a drop shadow and all kinds of other things to the text itself, which I think looks really cool. And then you can even change the color of the drop shadow if you don't want it to be the black. So because we didn't put any sort of shape behind the letters BFF, it's sometimes it's hard to sort of see. So I like to go to the design tab on the left and go down to draw. And then I take the brush size and make it just a little bit bigger and I take hardness all the way down so that it's faded around the edges. And then you can kind of just stamp behind the BFF lettering so that it's a little bit easier to see. Now I'm just going to show kind of one more option that you can do to add some overlays to your image. I'm going to take the little oblong circle there and add it, change the color, and then I'm going to rotate it a little bit because I think by rotating sometimes it can look really cool. And I'm going to change the color and then I'm also going to take the outline color and take it, uncheck the box where it says transparent just so that you can change the color of that if you'd like to. I also like to fade overlays just a little bit. I don't always do it, but it's nice to have the option. And I'm going to go ahead and add some text again. I'm going to be using text here that does require a subscription just because it's one of my favorite texts, but you certainly don't need to do it. It's just sort of a cool option. And then again, you can rotate your text, change the color, do whatever else you want to it, and have it fill that overlay so it looks like it was made together. And then I just wanted to show how I find the transparent background overlays from Google. I just make sure that I type in whatever I want with the letters PNG. And then when you click on the image, what you want to look for is the transparent background, which is the like gray and white gridded. And then by saving that to your computer, you can add it to your overlay and your thumbnails if you want to have a little extra something. And you can also do this with your videos too. Thank you. 
Another feature I really like about PicMonkey with editing images is that you can actually erase a portion of the image if you want and then you can also paint it back on, which is nice if you can't find an image that has the PNG background, you can just find a regular image and then erase whatever you don't want to show. Once you're happy with your image, the last step is just to export and save to your computer. I just name it whatever I want. I usually click on Sean because that is the highest resolution. And then I just export it to my computer and you can use it as a thumbnail in your videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys found it helpful. I will see you in my next video. Bye bye!